very familiar with IV optics. I want to get a sense of, okay, and how many, this is the first you've really heard of it and you're here to get new, more information. Okay, so we've got a few. So we, we've got ultra experts and, and new people. So I'm gonna try to try to bring something that of value to everyone, hopefully. Uh, let me give a, a little overview of what I'll be covering in my talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of IV objects, some of the current projects I'm working on, what my future direction is, and then I'll present some technical aspects for uh, just depending on how much time there is and then if there's any questions. And by all means, at any time during my talk, feel free to ask a question if you have one. Uh, IV Optics actually began some time ago, 1996, so we're about 13 years and, and running. And uh, the beginning of IV Optics was I, I worked as an X-Base developer for U-Haul International. That's a moving van and trailer and equipment rental company in, in the United States. And we were using uh, Fox Pro and they wanted to totally rewrite their whole point of sale application, which at the time, it was the second largest point of sale application in the United States. It was a very, very involved nationwide uh, program. And they gave me the task of going out and analyzing what technology should we use for this entire rewrite of this point of sale application and reservation and inventory management, fuel management, it, it, it encompassed many things. And so that's what began my search. And at U-Haul, they had a strong Pascal background because they used to be on the UNET platform before they came into the, the DOS platform. So, Obviously, that directed me in the direction of Delphi because it was a, a Pascal-based development environment that would have matched very well with the existing legacy skills that that they had. U-Haul International, we had about 20 developers and about 15 people on the quality assurance side. So it was a very large-scale software development environment. and. Uh, so I figured if we could leverage the past experience, at least half of the people on the team had been with U-Haul for a number of years already. And uh, so, so Delphi was, was perfect. It was a rapid application development system. They wanted to go to Windows. And so basically then it was what database product do we base this system on it. And in all of my research and studies, Interbase came up as, as the ideal back end for this new system written with the Delphi front end. And so I presented all of my recommendations. Well, I should say I tried to. When, when I went to give my presentation on what I believe U-Haul's future technology should be, I was informed that the board of directors had had meetings with Microsoft people and they decided that Microsoft was the way they were going to go. <coughs> Thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, I was, uh, not only was I personally offended, but I also knew that that would be a complete disaster because what they were going to do is have a, a, a Microsoft SQL Server backend with a visual Fox Pro front end. And, and, and I had already considered that as an option. And it was just layers of all kinds of interpretation. Visual Fox Pro was a disaster itself, let alone trying to hook to a, 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 a true client server database, if you could even call Microsoft SQL Server that at the time. So anyway, I uh, did not <clears throat> remain working there by my own volition and moved on because I wanted to work for somebody who had 
Delphi and Interbase as their technology. And, and so fortunately, I was able to uh, begin working with a, a consultancy group that had contracts with the state of Arizona, uh, the Department of Water Resources. And so I started working there. And they were using Delphi, but it was an Oracle backend. Uh, but nonetheless, Delphi, just getting in Delphi was, was good enough for me. And, and so, but I had my eye on Interbase because that's the database I really wanted to use. And unfortunately at the time, it, when I studied Interbase and, and Delphi, then I found out what was in the middle, this thing called the Borland Database Engine. <laughs> and I came to find out that these two beautiful soulmates that really belonged together had this irritating like angry stepfather in the middle of them <laughs> and so so I, I took it on as a project to say well let's get rid of the database Borland database engine and I'm just going to dig into it and see if I can write my own connectivity between the two and, and so it, essentially that was the birth of IB objects and it, it wasn't but six months later I had a, a, an actual full-time position offered to me to go to work for the Arizona Sec Secretary of State. And they used Delphi and Interbase, and they were extremely delighted to hear that I was actually already working on a way to eliminate the BDE. And so I had the great benefit of having a full-time salary with an employer that encouraged me to spend a lot of my time actually developing IV objects. And of course, working for a government agency, there was no conflict of interest for intellectual property rights. So then I spent time off the clock doing all of the necessary things to package it, document it, and make it something into something that others could use as, as a viable uh, uh, product. So, and I worked for the, the Secretary of State for over 12 years before, before I concluded my efforts there. And they, essentially, the Secretary of State is an elected official. And so every two years, potentially, a new administration would come and go. And so I, I'm actually delighted that, that I stayed there with 12 years without any significant disruption. But ultimately, a new administration came in. They want, they got in bed with IBM and the whole Microsoft thing, and so it was U-Haul all over again. <laughs> so that was when I determined that I had some, some money saved up, and, and I thought, now's my time, because ultimately I wanted to make this IB Objects product my means of, of being my sole source of income for my family. And so 2009 comes along and everything was said. I gave my employer notice and they kept me on for a little while longer and savings were up. We, we bought a new property in, a, in my dream paradise world. And, but then all of a sudden, next thing I know, here I am, now I'm without a job and I put all my savings into a property that we were living in. And without making a long story, I basically got sued. My property was foreclosed. And so I, instead of having my dream all come together just so wonderfully, uh, I found myself virtually homeless, broke, and <laughs> in a very, very difficult situation. Uh, so uh, fortunately, that's all behind me now. And I'm now resettled in a home and good internet and and uh, about four months ago, CETA Software, and CETA Software has actually been a, a long-term customer and, and friend. We've actually had a fairly close relationship over many years. And uh, in fact, it was uh, thanks to CETA Software, I even had a place for my website to run while I was going through all of my turmoil. IV Objects actually ran from CETA Software for quite some time. Many of you may not have known that. Uh, but anyway, thanks to CETA Software, he's really given me a lot of strength and, and encouragement. And, and now I'm actually a part-time uh, contracting consultant with CETA Software. And, and so that helps to have that baseline 
stability of income for my family. And fortunately, uh, IV object sales uh, are in, on a parallel with my ability to, to give it time and attention. As that has increased, so my sales started to regain some of their former uh, strength. So that's the history uh, of what brings me to this point. And what I've been working on currently is the biggest thing was the Unicode support. That was a huge hurdle to overcome. It, it vastly affected many, many things. And unfortunately, uh, I have to admit, I made some mistakes along the way in how I was intending on coping with that. And we'll just call it a period of denial. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to deal with this string, so damn it, we'll just do an a anti-string and just keep it the way it's been. And I was kind of resistant to change. And I took a few clubbings to the head, and unfortunately, they weren't hard enough and long enough. But finally, <laughs> finally, with, with the help of, of good friends and loyal customers, some of you in here are who I'm speaking about, uh, now I'm to the point where the Unicode support appears to be very complete, functional, and so getting the IBO4 product supporting Unicode has is, is been the main activity. And I, I've actually also had uh, quite a bit of other activities going on that have been not so visible. Uh, I've been working on both my 5.0 product as well as 4.9 and I've been backporting most everything that went into my 5.0 development into the 4.0 because everything is so interrelated it was just easier to keep one solid consistent source code base and and uh, but with with my new 5.0 release that, that I should be making official and supported within weeks um, very close. Mainly what's left is, is documentation and the uh, installation routines. But I've included the uh, IBO administration components. There's kind of been various uh, community provided versions floating around and some of them evolved in a little bit different ways and so I went out and gathered all of what was out there and went through it all and carefully merged and brought it all together made it Unicode compliant, and now it will become a, a supported part of the IV objects package. Uh, I totally restructured the source directories. Checking's leaving, I'll come back a little bit. Okay, thank you. And uh, <coughs> that should help it be more straightforward to work with it. There was well over a thousand files in, in the IV04 directory. It was just a nightmare every time you wanted to go in and pick a file out for something. Uh, I've recently completed 64-bit uh, support for Delphi XE2, and uh, that was actually not too terribly difficult. Uh, but I do want to put that through a bit more testing and prove it out a bit better before I say it's done, but that, it's essentially there. Uh, I also spent about three, maybe four months working with a, a, a good friend of mine on the uh, free Pascal side, and I actually have IV objects ported to free Pascal, and most of it's done, but I don't yet have there's some technical aspects on the, the visual control side that are going to, is going to be quite challenging. For example, uh, having my ID grid with the ability to put drop down components and other, it doesn't allow a window, a window control to be the child of a window control. So there's some technical limitations that are going to necessitate re-engineering some things with the visual controls. But essentially, everything non-visual related for uh, Lazarus is, is done. And there were a few difficulties with working out how to do the registry. 
because I do rely on the registry to some effect. And basically, we just had to write our own registry system. So that was probably one of the more involved aspects. And if there's time, perhaps I'll even show you some ID object applications running in Lazarus, if that's of interest. Uh, for the future, uh, I plan to continue maintaining ID05 indefinitely because I'm going to be taking a fairly radical shift beyond that, but I don't want to leave behind that, that soulmate marriage where there's no angry stepfather in the middle. I think there's value in, in having just a purely tailored Firebird to Delphi or to Lazarus, very close relationship. Uh, so as new versions of Delphi, as new versions of Firebird, etc. come out, I will be continuing to keep the ID05 uh, supporting all of those new, new advancements. Uh, with ID06, which I don't have a, a, a fixed time for that, uh, I plan to support the FireMonkey visual controls that Embarcadero is now bringing in for their cross-platform efforts so that you'll be able to create an ID objects based application in the FireMonkey visual control set as well. So that will also give uh, the cross-platform capabilities there. And of course, completing the visual side of Lazarus, having that all worked out and, and so that will be ID06. And, and then beyond that, uh, as, as Interbase and Firebird are becoming a lot more divergent, uh, it's going to cause me to either say, I'm going to completely drop support for Interbase altogether and, and just go with, with Firebird. Uh, but I don't want to disenfranchise existing interbase customers. I think that would be wrong. And so essentially what I feel the need to do, and, and there's actually even a lot of customer interest and support in creating a, a more enterprise level access layer that actually has a driver layer so that you could take your IB objects base application and, and run it against different backends, whether it be uh, Oracle or DB2 or you know some of these other industry standard databases. And it, it would be a native driver layer. Uh, I might also write to the ODBC API or perhaps some of the others, but really my main interest is to keep that more native, raw, good performance level. So that, that will be the focus there. Any questions, clarifications on, on that? Okay. Okay, so now we move into the technical side. And uh, last night I had a good visit with some of my longtime customers and we kind of talked about some of the things that they felt that would be of value. And uh, so maybe if I get a sense, I'll try to feel, feel out. Of, of all the things listed here, there's some of the unique as aspects of, of the IBO architecture. Uh, there's some buffering features, transaction features, and then uh, conversion of a BDE application to IBO is, I don't, I don't think I'll have time to cover all of that with, with what I've got, so maybe uh, does anyone in here, raise your hand, have an application running with the BDP that you are looking to eliminate? So if nobody does, then maybe I can just, we'll skip that one. Uh, I will just say in a nutshell about that, um, I designed T data set based components that are on top of the native IB objects ar architecture so that you can have a completely Borland T data set <coughs> compatible way to access Firebird Interbase. And when I designed that layer, 
I modeled it exactly after the T query T table and essentially made it to where is all you have to do to migrate an application from the BD to IBO is use the tool G replace and just swap the class and unit names for the There's a few other aspects you may need to fiddle with, but uh, there's two demo applications that come with Delphi 7. Basically, I would just G replace them, open the folder, and show you that it just runs. I mean, it, it, you can migrate applications very quickly. Uh, if any of you are independent consultants wanting to, to do work for companies, I, I understand there are a, a fair number of, of software shops that are still stuck with applications with the BDE. And so if you get proficient with, <laughs> with IB projects, that would be a very lucrative way to say, well, I will bid this job to migrate this application don't get paid by the hour because you won't get paid very much. Because <laughs> if it goes as fast as it should, you could probably convert a, an application of a very large size still with, with very minimal effort. Because I've pretty much done all the work for you. And the nice thing of it is, is all the things the BD was supposed to do and the pitfalls and the problems, I actually worked it out to where you can avoid a lot of the, the problems. For example, the T-table, oftentimes you would, if, if you're working with a very large table, and if you didn't have your T-table configured just perfectly, you could get that hourglass that, what the BD is trying to do is pull all the records from the server into the BDE where it's like, hey, I'm a database engine too, you know, but I need all 100,000 records to do this for you, and it was often very willing to do that, which was very problematic. But with IV objects, uh, I was able to put in a layer of, of smarts, we'll call it, that virtualized that 100,000 records. And instead of needing to pull all those records to the client to work on that data, I actually parsed the SQL that puts that work back on the server where it belongs so that the server's doing the work and you're, the person using the application, it feels to them like they're working with a large data set of 100,000 records, but all of the work is pushed onto the server where it belongs. That's the whole point of client-server. Uh, and, and to do that in your application, obviously you can redesign things to where you set up your interface such that you're not actually working with directly with 100,000 records, but the way the way that components work with with you know T table, it's just so easy to grab a T table and drop it down on your form and just work with it. Uh, and so I've tried to make it to where whatever it is you're trying to do, there's a client server friendly way to do it, even though the application that's being presented to the user is the old X base type of format. Uh, okay, so now we're down to three that remain. What should we have a vote? Because <laughs> I'm not even sure I'll cover. I could probably give days of training on transactions alone. Uh, but for example, but how many would be interested in? in actually getting into transactions to some extent. Okay. Um, how about just some of the unique aspects, just kind of a general showcase of, of things in, in IB objects that's kind of unique or that sets it apart. Okay, that's pretty good showing. Uh, the buffering, that's kind of more technical if you're already using it. This, this was a Maybe I can just talk about it a little bit because it, 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 it is also somewhat of a unique aspect. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into the IDE. Let's see. I'm trying to decide whether I use Delphi 7 or XE2. What we'll do is I'll just jump into I'll just jump into Delphi 7. I think it's 
should be fine. Uh, with IP objects, you have the ability, if you've got a buffer data set, normally you've just got your, your primary record pointer that you have the various methods, first, last, next, prior, etc. But when you're working with those, you'd have to go through the process of disable interface because you don't, or disable controls because you don't want the controls reacting when you're just looking through the data that you already have buffered. And so IB objects allows you to have an alternative buffer cursor rather than your main cursor or pointer, record pointer. And so you can actually have your own set of field objects that point to the, the buffer record pointer. So you can actually work directly with the data that's in your buffer data set without having to interfere with your primary record pointer. So you don't have to save row number, do everything, put it back, keep your all your controls from showing what's going on. So that if if somebody wants to they can I could give a private showing of that, but we can we can just leave that there. Okay, this is a, this is a tool that I actually provide. It's just kind of a general little miniature easy to use admin, <coughs> admin tool. And it enables you to save various layouts so that you don't always have to type in passwords and path names and so forth. And uh, many of the component editors in IB objects, I, I reuse the forms from this little application in the component editors. So by showing you this application, I'm actually teaching you programming with IB objects because if you double click on a TIB connection control, you will actually see this same form because whatever you put in here, instead of being stored in the registry as it would now, is actually just stored in your component itself. And essentially, this is the uh, famous employee.gdb. I'm sure we've all become acquainted with that. Uh, Basically, when you get in this tool, it kind of gives you an idea of what your tables look like. You can look at the source code that goes into the creation of your tables, etc. And all of the this is a uh, a button bar that could actually be dropped right into your own application. Uh, that browse form that I brought up uh, essentially shows you. Oh, that's fine. I'm going to have to fix that. It's not pulling the contents of the blog properly. So you kind of get a list of what all's in your database. Uh, let's see. So when you pull up a transaction component, you actually get access to all of these various uh, <coughs> transaction properties. Uh, and if you pull up a query form, this is actually the uh, component editor that you will get. So if you have a TIB underscore query on your form, or your data module and you double click on it, then this is what appears. And uh, if you have a connection, then you'll get this very crude query builder. It's not much of a query builder, but basically you can at least see the names of your tables and the columns that are in each table. And uh, so if I double click on that, I can highlight some of these here. Insert those in. So we've got us a 
query to work with. Now I can go through.